Hello there you guys, welcome to another my live videos and on this video there is lots to negotiate about so I was reading a lot of reports yesterday and it does say that Ed Woodward is back in negotiations with Paul Popper's agent Mini Raliola uh, to resolve Paul Popper's future and also to stop Mini Raliola making public attacks against the football club because I do believe already that Mini Raliola has make, made a lot of public attacks against the football club. Now, obviously, you know, we do know that Paul Popper's agent, Mini Raliola, has been talking a lot this year, especially, you know, at the start of the year, and that, you know, Mini Raliola was coming out and, you know, basically saying that Paul Popper is not only going to Solskjaer's property. Uh, don't forget, obviously, you know, on Gary Neville's birthday, um, he told Gary Neville to screw himself. And actually, you know, Gary Neville reacted to that and called Mini, Mini Raliola a leech. So he has been talking a lot. And, you know, not too long ago, he did say, you know, Mini Raliola, he would like to take a great footballer to Real Madrid in the summer. And obviously, you know, he does mean Paul Popper. But at least in the last couple of years, Mini Raliola has been trying to get his client a transfer away from Manchester United completed in that. So, yeah, Ed Woodward and Mini Raliola are back in negotiations. So that's according to the Daily Mail and a few other reports. Now, I do believe that Manchester United are going to sell Paul Popper in the summer transfer window, uh, but it's not assured. But obviously, you know, reports that were coming out recently, you know, saying that, you know, we've slashed around £80 million off our asking price. We are now willing to sell Paul Popper for just £100 million this summer. And that figure is totally comparison to last summer because obviously, you know, last summer we revealed that we wanted around £180 million for him. And of course, Real Madrid were not willing to pay £180 million. And this is the main explanation why Paul Popper's move to Real Madrid didn't materialise. I think um, it said not too long ago that we wanted around £150 million for him. Now, obviously, you know, Paul Pogba's appearances have been limited this season. He's only managed to play eight times for the club this season due to his injuries. The last time Paul Pogba played was our 4-1 win against Newcastle. And the last time he started from the start was back in September. But like I mentioned, you know, since Paul Pogba rejoined the football club anyway... Uh, from Juventus back in 2016, he's had a long-running transfer saga. Now, I just basically you know, want his long-running transfer saga to come to a conclusion. This year, Pob has been subject to a lot of transfer speculation. Last year, he was subject to a lot of transfer speculation. Obviously, you know, under the Jose Mourinho era, there was a lot of talks about him leaving because Pogba enjoyed a very, very difficult, you know, relationship, you know, with Jose Mourinho on that. As it stands now, Paul Pogba has got two years left on his Man United contract. Well, it is a year with an option of a further year. And I probably am convinced that Man United will trigger that um, extension on his contract to stop his £100 million valuation going even lower. So this is what I think you know Manchester United will do. I don't think it will be anything to do with keeping him at the football club. Uh, don't forget, uh, recently you know, Paul Pogba has uh, been training. Uh, he was training indoors um, last week, obviously, you know, with Victor Lindelof. Um, and he, obviously, he was obviously in a Juventus shirt, so that did fuel some speculation up. And he had Matuidi on the back of it, but Paul probably, you know, was paying tribute to Matuidi because, don't forget, he was tested positive for coronavirus. And, of course, you know, Paul probably last week had some personal coaching uh, with Michael Carrick and that. But he has, you know, been stepping up his fitness regime. I'm very convinced, probably, that Paul Popper will play for Manchester United again before he does decide to leave the football club. Now, I think he'll either go to Real Madrid. If he doesn't go to Real Madrid, I think he'll go to Juventus because he did enjoy four good years with Juventus. But the vast majority of his performances at Man United have been totally comparison. Don't forget PSG have been in for him. Also, Barcelona have been in for Paul Popper in the past and that. But definitely, you know, will leave the football club. Even if he wasn't to leave in the summer, I think at some point he would leave, you know. I'm very, very sceptical that from now he will spend the entirety of his career with Manchester United. But, you know, a lot of United fans have got different perception, perceptions on this. You know, some United fans would keep him and some United fans would let Paul Popper go. 
because you know so a lot of people now don't be, don't believe that we don't even need Paul Popper because obviously you know Bruno Fernandez is making a fantastic impact you know he's making the difference in the team you know he's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career Bruno Fernandez has what three goals and like four assists already for the football club and don't forget he won the Premier League Player of the Month for February but you know Paul Popper did actually you know say uh, the other week so. The, the narratives were totally comparison last week because last the other week, uh, a couple of weeks ago now, I think it was, sorry, Paul probably revealed that he was interested in staying at the football club and he was interested in extending his contract because, you know, he, he's aware of the impact that Fernandez has made and he believes that he can form a partnership with Bruno Fernandez. Now, obviously, you know, Dimitar Berbatov has come out and give his overarching view on that and Dimitar Berbatov is a former Man United player and he basically uh, says Man United should keep Paul Pogba, but he doubts that Bruno Fernandes and Pogba can be a partnership in our midfield because, you know, they have similarities in styles. And that was, you know, Dimitar Berbatov's overarching view on that. And then obviously, you know, after the 5-0 win against Lask, Solskjaer reiterated what Pogba had said. And Solskjaer did say that Paul Pogba will remain at Manchester United next season and that. But, you know, Edward was reopened negotiations with Mini Raliola to try and resolve Paul Pogba's future, you know, I and mean, he's obviously, you know, made made a peace offering basically. So this is why you know he's been back in negotiations with him. Uh, don't forget, you know, we had Paul Pogba when he was a lot younger, you know, back under the Alex Ferguson era. We had Paul Pogba. Um, he basically left left though due to limited appearances. We let him go on a free transfer to Juventus, and you know, we paid eighty nine million pounds for him. So as it stands at the moment. Pogba is our most expensive signing. But if we get rid of him, we'll generate a lot of money for his departure. And plus, you know, it'd free up our wage bill completely because Pogba is on 290 grand a week at the football club. So that's the latest news on Paul Pogba, guys. That's the latest news on him. But, you know, even if, you know, he was to, you know, play again for Manchester United, you know, he wouldn't be assured to be playing regular because obviously you've got the likes of Fred, McTominay, Matic, that are all in really, really good form now. And for Pogba to get in the mix, I think, you know, Fred McTomway or Matic, you know, would have to be dropped in that. So, also put that into the equation. So, that's the latest news on him. So, I also want to give you some latest news now on Andres Pereira and Jesse Lingard. Um, reportedly, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is already making plans for next season, of course. It still remains unknown whether Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be Manchester United manager next season. But he's already making plans, you know. Obviously, you know, it did confirm <coughs> uh, that Man United and Ed Woodward and that, you know, are going to make contact with a lot of players and agents in weeks to come. You know, this is why, you know, it has basically, you know, confirmed and that. So, Solskjaer, you know, has revealed basically, you know, he wants to make around three or four signings in the summer and he's planning to get rid of around five players in the summer transfer window and that. So, yeah, so I think two of the players that are going to leave is Jesse Lingard and Andres Pereira. Um, I think, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is considering getting rid of the pair of them because obviously, you know, Pereira and Lingard seldom play for Manchester United now. Obviously, you know, their appearances are totally limited. And I think, you know, Jesse Lingard has lost the confidence of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Obviously, you know, Jesse Lingard has been so inconsistent. Now, obviously, you know, reflecting on the years Jesse Lingard's been at the football club and reflecting on his status overall, he should be putting much more better performances out. Now, of course, you know, you know, Jesse Lingard, whether you play him in number 10 or whether you play him on the right, we just can't seem, seem to get the best out of him. I think he's still under contract on Man United until 2022. Uh, Jesse Lingard's been here for several years. Um, he's had quite a few loan spells. You know, he had a loan spell with Leicester, Birmingham. I think he was on loan at Birmingham. Derby and Brighton, so he was he got loaned out with quite a few clubs, and he's on a substantial amount at the club. I think he's on around is it one hundred grand a week or something like that, you know. But look at his stats last year; they were dreadful. Didn't register one goal or one single assist. Did the player? So I think Man United are going to definitely consider getting rid of him in the summer and that. Um, Andres Pereira, same perception on him. He's going to be leaving the football club in the summer. Uh, I think Andres Pereira is under contract here until 2023. Um, he's been very, very inconsistent. You know, most of his appearances come from the bench to Andres Pereira's, you know, very, very poor, in my opinion. And, you know, don't forget, 
He's had a couple of loan spells in Spain, you know, because he went on loan with Granada. He also went on loan with Valencia. But yeah, they're two players that Manchester United are considering getting rid of. So that's uh, the latest uh, news um, on them. I think, you know, the other players that Manchester United are considering getting rid of, um, I definitely you know, believe that Phil Jones will be leaving the football club in the summer. You know, Phil Jones has been very inconsistent. And Phil Jones has, has been another long-serving player at the Cubby club. You know, Phil Jones is now into his ninth season as a Manchester United player, and he has enjoyed eight years here. Don't forget there was reports coming out last week saying that Newcastle and West Ham had all expressed their interest in the player. Now, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of centre-halves in the team. Obviously, you know, Maguire and, Maguire and Lindelof are our first-choice centre-halves. Obviously, you know, you've got Bay and Tuanzebe that have just come back from injury. They are backups to Harry Maguire and Lindelof. And obviously, you know, you've got Luke Shaw that's played as a centre-half a few times this season. So there's no way Phil Jones is going to get into the team. So I think we need to get rid of him. Yep, so he's another one. I think also, too, we're going to negotiate on getting rid of Marcus Rojo on a permanent transfer. Obviously, as you all know, at the moment, he is out on loan with Estudiantes as Marcus Rojo. And also to um, Alexis Sanchez, um, I think we're also going to consider, you know, getting rid of him. Rid of him on a permanent transfer because at the moment, you know, Alexis Sanchez is on loan at Inter Milan. Despite the fact he's on loan with Inter Milan, Manchester United are still paying the vast majority of his wages. Uh, we're still paying him like 300 grand a week and Inter are paying like the other 100 off thousand. But we get rid of him on a permanent transfer, it will free up our wage bill completely. You know, because Sanchez, Sanchez did enjoy a difficult 18 months with Manchester United. You know, so yeah, we're going to get rid of around five players in the summer. And I think Solskjaer, you know, is hoping to generate over £200 million for their departures. Obviously, you know, we've generated quite a bit of money, you know, already, you know, for the players that have left since Solskjaer's arrival. Because you know, a lot of players have left since Solskjaer's arrival. Obviously, you know, the players that have left on a permanent transfer. Obviously, you know, Young left. This year, he went to Inter Milan after he enjoyed eight and a half years at Manchester United. Obviously, um, you know, Damien, he left on a permanent transfer last summer. He went to Parma. Obviously, Ander Herrera left last summer after he enjoyed five years at the club. Uh, Manny and Fellaini left uh, back in January 2019 after he enjoyed six years at the club. Obviously, Lukaku left on a permanent transfer. He went to Inter Milan last summer and since his arrival at Inter Milan he's been firing in all cylinders as Romelu Lukaku and he's done really, really well for Inter Milan. You know, we'll, we'll probably now come to regret the, de the decision by letting Romelu Lukaku go because, you know, Lukaku, of course, did enjoy two years at Manchester United and, of course, he scored 42 goals in 96 games for the club in all competitions. But, you know, he was exceptional in his first season was Lukaku, but I thought in his second season didn't really replicate that. Basically, we had to let him go in the end because Lukaku lost his place in the team. So this is why we let him go. But Solskjaer did reveal back in September that I felt as though that the club had made the right decision by letting him go. This is what, you know, Solskjaer had said. But, you know, Lukaku, Lukaku don't forget, has recently, you know, been talking a lot about Solskjaer and he's actually, you know, about Solskjaer and he believes that Man United are going in the right direction under him and he believes, you know, we are making the right decisions and, you know, we are recruiting the right players in. Uh, but looking at it from a financial point of view, uh, would have been happy because, you know, we generated a lot for Lukaku's departure because we got £70 odd million pounds for him and we paid around £75 million pounds in from Everton back in 2017 and uh, so yeah a lot of players have left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival like I mentioned uh, the, some of the players we've loaned out uh, we're looking to get rid of on permanent transfers Smalling um, he's unknown at the moment uh, whether you know he's going to come back to Manchester United or not I think you know Roma are interested in getting Smalling on a permanent transfer Roma are interested because he's been a revelation since his arrival in Italy as Chris Smalling. You know, Smalling, of course, did enjoy nine years at Manchester United, so he was a very long-serving player. I think quite a few other Premier League clubs have expressed their interest, so don't know if he's going to be coming back to Man United after his loan spell. 
Um, you've got Dean Enter now on loan with Sheffield United. I think it's more than likely he will be coming back to Man United after his loan spell with Sheffield United. And the club did make the right decision by putting Dean Enter now on loan because, as you all know, it has gained Dean Henderson more experience in that. And there's been a lot of talk saying that Dean Henderson, when he comes back, could become our number one keeper. And David De Gea, of course, could lose his place in the team. So there has been actually not a lot of reports saying that David De Gea could leave Manchester United in the summer. And that. So yeah, so departures are expected to happen in the summer. So we'll delve into a bit of transfer news now, like I've been keeping up to date with. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of players on Manchester United's agenda. Um, you know, Solskjaer, like I said, does believe we need around three signings to become title contenders. But obviously, it is a transition period. Uh, and Solskjaer revealed at the beginning of the year, he's hopeful that Manchester United can get through this transition period in that. But, you know, Solskjaer's revealed the three areas, you know, where he wants Manchester United to strengthen up. You know, he wants to bring a centre-forward in. He also wants to bring a right winner in. And he also wants to bring a central midfielder in in that. So, these are the uh, this is, you know, where Solskjaer, you know, does basically want to strengthen up. So, obviously, you know, Solskjaer has confirmed, you know, that he still wants to continue the policy of recruiting young players to Manchester United like he did do last summer and that. Because, obviously, you know, I think we've had the youngest squad in the Premier League this season, you know, to be quite honest with you. So, one of the players on our agenda, as you all know, is Jadon Sancho. Obviously, you know, we've been relentlessly linked with Jadon Sancho. Obviously, we were relentlessly linked with Jadon Sancho last year. But the main explanation why we didn't get Jadon Sancho is because we failed to qualify for the Champions League. Now, I think for us to attract players to the elite level, we do need qualification for the Champions League. Now, the Daily Express came out yesterday and they basically said that Jadon Sancho wants a transfer completed in July and Man United's Man United still remains his number one choice. And I think Borussia Dortmund um, know from no that, you know, they're resigned to losing Jadon Sancho. So they're basically looking to recommend Jude Bellingham in as a replacement for Jadon Sancho and that. But a lot of teams have expressed their interest in Jadon Sancho. Liverpool, Chelsea, Real Madrid, you know, PSG, all of them have expressed their interest in the player. But I think, you know, it's been confirmed he wants to make a return to the Premier League because don't forget Sancho did endure two years with Manchester City. But he left Manchester City because he never, he never really got any first-team opportunities at Man City and that. But, you know, Bruce Hugh Dortmund, you know, Bruce Hugh Dortmund CEO, he came out and basically reiterated, saying that, you know, if Jadon Sancho still wants to leave Dortmund, we will discuss that. And he does want to leave Bruce Hugh Dortmund. And don't forget the expert, the European expert came out not too long ago and confirmed that Sancho will be in the Premier League next season. So this is what, you know, he had uh, basically um, said. But, you know, Sky in Germany, I think, came out in February, which was last month, and they said that Jadon Sancho has made a decision on, you know, his future, and he does want to leave Borussia Dortmund at the end of the season. Now, Jadon Sancho, of course, is into his third season with Borussia Dortmund. I think he scored around, is it, 32 goals in 90 games uh, since his arrival there. Uh, obviously, early on in the season, he was dropped in quite a lot of games. But I think in his past two seasons, Sancho has been a revelation. I've got to be honest with you. He has still got two years left on his contract. He's under contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2022 and that. But he is our number one priority target for the summer. Definitely, Jadon Sancho would dramatically improve us. And I think he'd go well alongside the likes of, you know, James, Martial, you know, Rashford and that, uh, Greenwood. By the way, you know, he knows Rashford well already because, you know, they're both English and they both play together in the international team. So he'd, he'd go very, very well alongside Marcus Rashford. Jadon Sancho is predominantly a right winner, but, you know, he, he can occasionally, you know, play him centrally in that. Uh, Borussia Dortmund have already quoted out how much they want. They do want at least £100 million for him. Maybe he could cost £120 million. So that means he would be a record signing in the Premier League. And he would be our most expensive signing than that. So I'm actually not very, very convinced that Manchester United can sign him in the summer. Definitely very convinced about it. So I think he's coming to Manchester United. Liverpool said they want him, but I don't see how he'd get in Liverpool's team week in, week out, unless Liverpool sold Salah, Firmino or Mane. And it also said that Man United were willing to offer Jadon Sancho around £200,000 a week to come in. You know, definitely in that. But, you know... 
it would be beneficial for his career, you know, if he was to make a return to the Premier League. So, yeah, so that's the bas basically the latest news on Sancho. Also, too, you know, I've been talking with you guys a lot, haven't I, about Jude Bellingham. Obviously, you know, Jude Bellingham is another player on our agenda. Now, a lot of reports were coming out last week saying, you know, we'd offered uh, Jude Bellingham around around a £100,000 a week contract to blow Borussia Dortmund out of the water. Now, obviously, you know, Jude Bellingham is going to cost in the access of around £30 million. Um, obviously, you know, I was reading reports as well, and it did say he's made a decision over Man United and Liverpool, and his preference is actually moved to Man United over Liverpool, is Jude Bellingham's and that. Uh, but a number of clubs have been in for him, Munich, Borussia Dortmund, Chelsea, United, Liverpool, all of them have been in for Jude Bellingham. Now... Like I mentioned to you, um, I don't think his Premier League standard is yet, and I don't think he's at that elite level. I think, you know, Birmingham do need to give him at least another season in the Championship, you know, you know, to gain him more experience, experience because he is inexperienced at the moment, is Jude Bellingham. You know, this is only his first season in the senior squad in the Championship. It's only his first season in the senior squad. Uh, obviously, up until this point, he's spent the entirety of his career with Birmingham because he's been a Birmingham player since the age of 88 as Jude Bellingham. Obviously became the youngest player to represent Birmingham because he made his debut at the age of 16 years and 38 days, did Jude Bellingham. Yes, he did. So he became the youngest player to represent them. But I just don't think he's got the minerals to come and succeed in the Premier League as yet. He has persistently been playing this season for Birmingham. I think he's played around 35 games is it, in all competitions. So he's been playing persistently as the player. But I've got to give him a lot of credit because he's done really, really well. He's going to be signing his professional contract in the summer. I think when he does turn 17 years of age, Jude Bellingham. So yeah, he's another player on Man United's agenda. That had fueled a lot of speculation up the other week. Obviously, you know, he'd visited um, our training ground at Jude Bellingham. Um, obviously, you know, he'd had negotiations with Ferguson. Also, too, his parents were there. So, it remains unknown whether we're going to sign Jude Bellingham. So, yeah, so there are two players on our agenda. I obviously give you the news yesterday night, didn't I, of in regards to James Madison. Now, it reportedly says that Manchester United are still interested in signing James Madison from Leicester. Now, an estimated guess, I think James Madison would cost us around sixty or £70 million, pounds if you know, if we were to recommend him in. Now, obviously, like I mentioned, Rio Ferdinand yesterday gave his overarching view on this, and he does believe that Jack Grealish has got the cutting edge over James Madison, but he's actually not explained why. Um, and Grealish has also been on our agenda, but I'm very sceptical that we'll sign Grealish and Madison in the same transfer window and that. If we were to sign both players, they'd probably cost us around £150 or £160 million and that. But, you know, we've been relentlessly linked with James Madison. Obviously, you know, he's been a revelation since his arrival at Leicester. I think this is James Madison's second season now with Leicester. And he's basically replicating what he did in his debut season. In James Madison's debut season, don't forget, he created more chances than any other player in the Premier League and that. And, you know, he's a very, very good player. And definitely Leicester would generate a lot more than what they paid for him if they were to sell him in the summer. Leicester, of course, did pay £20 million pounds him from Norwich in the summer 2018. He had a loan spell with Aberdeen. He began his career with Coventry. He's a very, very good player and definitely flourished under Brendan Rodgers' guidance. You know, he's predominantly an attacking mid. He's a... Uh, James Madison, but I think he operates on the left a lot. He's, what, 23, 24 years of age. Madison has got around, is it, three years left on his contract with Leicester. But Leicester know how much of an imperative player he is because, like I mentioned, Leicester have lost quite a few of their imperative players in recent years and that. But, yeah, Man United is still interested in him. And, you know, Jack Grealish, you know, he's one of our, I think he's our number one priority target for the summer is Jack Grealish. If Filler were to avoid relegation, he'd probably cost a similar amount to James Madison, around 60 or £70 million. Pounds. You know, if Filler were to get relegated, then probably Grealish wouldn't cost as much as £70 million pounds and that. So it's good that Man United, like I mentioned, are making plans for the summer. Obviously, you know, I've already, I already give you the news, didn't I, on Kane and... You know, Bamian and that yesterday, so I don't really need to reiterate that. But, you know, we have actually you know, got a lot of attacking players, like I mentioned. You know, we've got the likes of, obviously, you know, Martial and Rashford. You know, Rashford, of course, is out with a back injury 
Um, I think he's I think he's out for at least the next couple of weeks. He's Rashford, but you know you can say he has been a big miss. Obviously, you know we've got a Galo, and I've got to give Odi a Galo a lot of credit because Odi a Galo has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. Odi a Galo, you know, has got four goals in three starts for the club. Also provided a couple of assists, but like I mentioned, Odi a Galo is a good cover up to Marcus Rashford, and like I mentioned, is totally comparison to our other attacking players. But you know, he's an option of a different type of centre forward. You know, like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was saying, Solskjaer did make an admission saying we could decide to make Odi a Galo's transfer permanent. Obviously, even if we do, I still probably believe that Manchester United do need to get a centre forward in without a shadow of a doubt in that. And I think it did say Odina Gallo's even willing to take a pay cut to remain at Manchester United um, permanently. So, yeah, I still definitely believe that Man United do need a centre forward in that. Yes, we do. And, you know, since Solskjaer has come in, you know, he has spent around £220 million at the football club and he has recruited five players in. So I've got to give Solskjaer credit, you know, for the players that he has recommended in so far. You know, of course, Solskjaer has been at Manchester United now over a year. He's been here for 15 months as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He has been permanent Manchester United manager now for a year. You know, the main explanation why we give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job is reflecting on what he did when he was the interim manager and that. But I've also got to give Solskjaer a lot of credit recently because Man United have been in a good vein of form. We are unbeaten in our last 11 games in all competitions. This is our best vein of form since he was the interim manager, like I mentioned. And yeah, we're doing uh, really, really well. And also, you know, our record against the top six sides this season has been phenomenal. Um, also, Solskjaer's approach to, approach to games recently have been very, very good. Also, he showed a lot of tactical flexibility, so I've got to give Solskjaer a lot of credit for that. And, you know, a lot of aspects of our game have really, really improved. You know, a lot of players have improved under Solskjaer. We're creating chances. You know, our football looks more expansive. We're scoring goals. So it is, you know, very, very good to see. You know, it's very, very um, good to see in that. But, you know, we have got quite a few ambitions and, you know, the Europe League's an ambition for us because that's a chance for us getting some silverware on the board under Solskjaer. You know, and it's another route to Champions League football. Also, the FA Cup is a priority for us in that. And we can still finish in that top four this season. As it stands at the moment, we are sitting fifth, fifth in the Premier League. Manchester United are sitting fifth in the Premier League, just three points behind Chelsea in that. But there is still rumours going on saying that Manchester United could still ch change manage could get a change of management at the end of the season. Now, if we was to sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, then I think you know we'd probably recommend Pochettino in as his replacement because Pochettino has been relentlessly linked with the managerial role at Manchester United. And Pochettino did say, didn't he? You know that he wants an immediate return to management. Obviously, you know, Man United have obviously you know, already sat three managers since the Alex Ferguson era. Obviously, you know, we sat David Moyes after he enjoyed eight or nine months at the club. Obviously, you know, Ferguson, you know, made the mistake by recommending Moyes in, but that's the only mistake Ferguson's ever made, you know, by recommending Moyes in. But the main explanation why I recommended Moyes in is obviously, you know, because they were both Scottish. Obviously, you know, we enjoyed a very, very difficult time under Moyes. We finished seventh under the, under the David Moyes era. You know, so he went, obviously, you know, Louis van Gaal got sat. He uh, lasted longer than Moyes. We did win the FA Cup under van Gaal, but his philosophy wasn't right for the club. And, of course, after van Gaal, you know, we got rid of Jose Mourinho. Well, we got Jose Mourinho in, but we got rid of him after two and a half years. Um, obviously, you know, Mourinho had, had bad disputes with the board, had bad disputes with a lot of the top players. You know, and this is the main explanation why it didn't work out for Jose Mourinho at Manchester United. I think from my own perception, we recommended him in too late. Mourinho did win two cups in his first season. He won the Europa League and the League Cup. Um, also, you know, he got second place in his first season and that. So, yeah, we've already sat three managers and Solskjaer's our fourth permanent manager and that. But don't forget, Solskjaer is still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team because put into the equation, he's inheriting the vast majority of Jose Mourinho's players because the vast majority of these players are Mourinho's. There's still players here from the Van Gaal era. There's still Matty here from the David Moyes era. There's still a couple of players here from the Alex Ferguson era that Solskjaer is inheriting and that. And obviously, you know, if Pochettino was to come in, it'd be the same sort of thing with him. He'd be inheriting. Solskjaer's players, Mourinho's players and all of that. 
So I think Solskjaer needs time, you know, to make more signings at the football club. But, you know, Solskjaer was recently talking about how he had to overhaul Manchester United. Obviously, you know, when Jose Mourinho got sat. Obviously, a lot of things needed to change when Jose Mourinho went, including tactics and players and that. But I've got to be honest with you, I think, you know, the players that Jose Mourinho brought in now look better under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They do look better under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, definitely. But as you all know, the Glazers and Ed Woodward, obviously, you know, have come out and, you know, saying they are still determined to back Solskjaer and that. So, um, yeah. So anyway, guys, you know, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes, below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.